Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back once again. It is Mimo. Super happy to be here with you guys today because this is the day of the update. And as you guys know, I love base builds. And we've got some game changers in this update that are going to change the way the bases are built. So for those of you who know me already, uh, you've seen this base layout before with these walls, but we're going to be switching some stuff up because this base really worked well for me. But all of us are going to have to tweak the bases that we already have and make them work with the new update because now we've got a fourth mortar. Fourth mortar confirmed! We've got a fourth mortar, mortar and we've got some skeleton traps that are going to do some big things in the game. So over on this screen, I've got my base uh, pulled up for me to upgrade stuff and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and just start bringing things in here and we're going to talk about the way that I think uh, the game is going to be changed from this new update. So fourth mortar confirmed guys let's go ahead and bring in all of our mortars I already uh, got my other mortar upgraded we're going to put I get attacked from the bottom on this base the majority of the time so we're gonna bring our mortars in here and um, <clears throat> the other one is going to go right here and the other this one's going to go right here and the way that uh, you're going to be doing it now, instead of triangulating them, it's still going to be triangulated, but it's going to be squared or diamond, so half of a triangle, I guess you could say. Um, so you can see that the mortars now cover the entire base. That's going to be very important to make a square or a diamond out of your mortars in order to have them most effectively cover the base. Barch is one of the best strategies. I've always loved it, but I think that this might be the death of Barch, sadly, because mortars wreck Barch. So... Let's go ahead and bring in uh, the rest of our buildings. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring in all of our resources. This is a farming base because I love I love farming so very much because I like that money. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and bring in all of our resources and things of that sort. Now, uh, some of the other biggest things or some of the, one of the other biggest things in this update is going to be the skeleton trap. So you can see right now I've got my clan castle kind of off to the side. Uh, protecting the top half of the base, but the bottom half of the base isn't really protected that well right now. So anything that's going to be over here, archers or wizards are going to be able to take that gold and that elixir freely. So what do we have to do? We have to protect it uh, as best we can. So we're going to go ahead and bring in uh, one of our expos down here. And then here are the newest addition to the game besides the fourth mortar is these skeleton traps. You can see that their range is great. So one thing you want to make sure you do with your skeleton traps if you want them to work as another clan castle is make sure that they cover each other. So you can see right there they cover each other. They still cover each other right there. So we're going to put them as far away as possible to where they still cover each other because that way when one of them is triggered, they're all triggered. So that's one thing that you really have to pay attention to when it comes to using these skeleton traps. So now the whole bottom area of my base is protected by extra troops as is the top with my clan castle. So uh, you still do want to have your clan castle in an area where it's not easily pulled so people can't just deploy around and pull out your clan castle. So in this case mine are still uh, pretty well, my clan castle is still inside the base and it's going to take a lot for them to get in and pull out the troops. They're going to have to use a full attack. Same with this bottom area. Uh, they're going to have to deploy pretty heavily and just kind of, I don't know, really commit to the attack to pull those out. So you can also uh, switch it up a little bit if you want, and we could bring them in here like this. So we can bring one right there, we can bring one right there, and we can bring another one right in here and bring them so that they still cover each other. So right now they are covering each other. Bring this one in until it covers that. So that's another option for you guys if you, uh, if you want, if you want to protect the core of your base. And I might actually do that. Uh, in this design so that we have the core of the base protected very, very well. So let's go ahead and bring in the rest of our buildings. We're going to bring in uh, our wizard towers right here. Wizard towers, if you know anything about me, are my favorite defense in the game. I think that they absolutely wreck. So that's why they are super, super important to me. And I always make sure that they are covering um, exactly what I want them to cover. So we're going to just continue bringing on things. And guys, if y'all don't know me, uh, like I said earlier, one of my biggest things is base designs. I absolutely love designing bases. I think it's a huge, very important part in the game, uh, designing bases, because attacking isn't everything. Attacking is important, but once you attack and you get your loot, you have to make sure that you can defend it, right? So that's huge, and you have to you have to have an effectively designed base in order to do that. So. 
Uh, there are a lot of key things that you always need to make sure that you're doing when it comes to designing your base. Uh, those are now, not triangulating mortars, but squaring the mortars. Uh, having your wizard towers almost in a square covering your loot and <clears throat> the core of your base as well. So uh, the majority of my loot is covered by my wizard towers. We're going to bring in the other two gold storages right here. And you guys might think that this base looks a little bit weird, but the whole point of it is just to really confuse attackers. There's a whole bunch of different avenues and whatnot for troops to take, and it depends on if they're going after defenses, if it's golems or giants, whatever it may be. It's really going to mess them up when it comes to attacking this base. So laying it out in this manner was definitely purposeful. Where is my other uh, expo? Why am I not seeing it? Did I put it down somewhere on accident? Oh, it's down here in the corner. All right, so my there's the other expo. So we've got the expos triangulated as well. That's another very important thing that you want to do. You want to make sure that your inferno towers are far enough apart that they don't. Uh, we actually won't be able to put this trap right here. We're going to have to put them right in here because I have some defenses coming in there. We're going to move this air trap and just put this down here. This is going to cause some serious havoc in the center of the base when people get in there. So we're going to go ahead and bring in our air defenses as well. Put those bad boys right there. And then bring in our... Uh, why is that bomb right there? Did I, I moved that on accident. So we're going to bring in those two air defenses. They are going to protect the core of the base. We're going to bring in our Inferno Towers next as well as another Tesla. And then we're going to bring these bombs right here over... All these bombs got moved and stuff. That's weird. Uh, we're going to bring in this Inferno Tower right here. And we're going to bring in this Tesla right here. And then now here come our King and our Queen in the center of the base. You want them to make sure that they don't get aggro too easily either because you don't want people to be able to take them out super, super easily. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to finish just bringing in everything. We're going to bring in our last air defenses right here, which are protected by the archer towers. That's very important. You always want to protect your air defense by archer towers because archer towers are also a form of air defense. We're going to bring in this last little section down here as well. <clears throat> Where did I put that other? And then we're going to put this right in here. And then we've only got a couple more defenses, our cannons and our archer towers. Our last archer towers are going to go right in here, one and two. And we've got some spring traps right next to those. Let's go ahead and bring in our cannons. We've got one cannon up here that is going to be used to distract golems and whatnot. So the golems are going to come from the cannon and then walk over all those bombs, head right down here to the mortar, all the while the expos and the archers are shooting them, which is exactly what we want to happen. Now we've got to bring in these cannons over here as well. We've got one right here, one right here. One thing that you want to make sure you do when it comes to traps and giant bombs and spring traps is you want your cannon uh, or you want one defense and then you want your troops to walk from that one defense over the trap. So they're going to come from here and then head towards this wizard tower. You want to spring them off first because you don't want to spring a damaged troop because that's a waste of damage. You want to get rid of them and then damage the other ones. You don't want to damage them and then get rid of them because it's a waste. So both these spring traps are first, so the troops are going to walk over those, get sprung, and then activate this and kill whatever is next. So we're going to bring this one right here as well, and that is going to work at the top of the base also. We've got a couple more cannons to bring in, one cannon right here, and one cannon right over here. <clears throat> what am I missing up here? Oh, the cannon needs to go right there. <laughs> I was about to say. So we've got that last cannon right there, and then we have one more cannon, and I'm trying to remember where it goes. It goes right here as well. So once again, golems and whatnot will come after this, and then walk straight in over those bombs and get blown to pieces. We've got this little guy. We're going to bring that right here, and that is pretty much it. We're going to save the village right there, guys, and you can see we've got our fourth mortar. We've got all four of them. They are triangulated. Not really. They're diamond around the base. They are squared around the base. And we've got our skeleton traps right in here working as another clan castle. So clan castle covers the top. Skeleton traps cover the bottom. And <clears throat> of course, as I showed earlier, um, if you want to have your air bomb in the middle, you can bring your skeleton traps. You can put one right here. You can put one right here. And lastly, you can put one right here here. 
And that's up to you guys if you want to protect the bottom of the base like that. That might help protect your Expo a little bit from getting too much damage. But that is going to be this new fourth mortar skeleton trap design. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Again, my name is Molt. I like to make base builds a lot. Check out my channel for all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. I'm excited to see how this works. I'm definitely going to be showing you guys some replays of the skeleton traps in the fourth mortar doing work. But as always, make sure you keep calm and clash on for me, right? I'll see you guys later.